defeating head to head in a massive scavenger hunt across all of Disney's Hollywood studios. Whoever loses gets eaten by this dinosaur. What? I didn't yep. sign up for that. It's it's no, pretty that, dangerous. I'm not okay with that. That's ice very cream bad. for ice cream. Whoa! Well, I'll tell you one thing, Sage Stocky. What? I'm not getting eaten by that dinosaur. <laughs> oh no, you're going to the room, are you? <laughs> are you going to the room? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, you, I was gonna give you the rope. Oh, really? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, we are playing a scavenger hunt today in Hollywood Studios. It's a bit like bingo rules, where you can uh, you have to get five in a row, uh, five in a column, so five across, five down, or five on the diagonal, and you win. Uh, we can block each other, which is dramatic, and it seems like. Sage is in fact going for the rope. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start to block that guy. Let's find salad on three menus as we walk. I'm at 50's Primetime Cafe, a 50's themed restaurant with some pretty great comfort food. And I do have a Caesar salad on the entree list. And that's one. Just next door we have Hollywood and Vine, a character dining experience that is a buffet. And you'll see that they have breakfast and dinner with different characters. We've got creative array of salads. That's two. Okay, we're in Indiana Jones having some spectacular. Outside is a warning. Do not pull the rope if you pull the rope. I say, stop mucking about up there. Oh, sorry. There's, there's, there's someone working down there. So, uh, I don't really exactly know what it has to do with Indiana Jones other than he's, he's an adventurer. He's a person who discovers things. So, and also, I'm going to take a picture here. In potato land. I just took a picture at Potato Land. I sent it to Fry. Where you can find these fun photo spots are ba basically the exit of uh, Vacation Fun, an original short starring Mickey and Minnie. Vacation Fun is about a 10 minute movie. It's basically a montage of all the movies, that, uh, all, all the Mickey shorts that you can find on Disney Plus, uh, and all into one kind of brand new short. It's, it's, they're basically going on vacation and they're reminiscing about the times that they went on vacation. And the place they're actually going on vacation is Disney World. So that's like a fun, you know, synergy, corporate synergy tie-in. This is definitely a trickier board because it has some things that I don't know. So we'll see how we do here. Um, I do know one of them though is around here, but where? Is it in the sidewalk? She parked on top of it. Aha! They had to find Mortimer, which is right here. Mortimer & Co. 1928 Contractors. That is in the pavement right here on Sunset Boulevard, and that is a reference to Mickey's original name, Mortimer Mouse, until Lillian said, hey, well, the name Mortimer isn't great. Let's maybe think of something a little cuter, huh? And that's how we got Mickey Mouse. But 1928 was Mickey's debut year in Steamboat Lily. So that is what that Easter egg is, and we've got that. Now, I think my strategy is uh, I'm, I'm, I am going for five in a row. I do have to kind of like go off the beaten path from time to time because I don't want Quincy knowing exactly the row that I'm going for. But I, but she's also very smart and she knows how to play this game well. It really comes down to who knows what. And there are actually quite a few on this board that are pretty tricky. This is definitely an old school uh, scavenger hunt board. Meaning there's a lot of like Easter eggs on this board, a lot of history things on this board. You really, really like hidden details. You're gonna have to really put your uh, knowledge to the test for this one, or I mean, I will, but if you're playing along at home, you will too. All right, I'm rounding out my salads with my three of three salad here at the Hollywood Brown Derby. Uh, this is a very nice restaurant here in Hollywood Studios and they have the famous Brown Derby Cobb salad. Our famous Cobb salad right there on the menu. This is a delicious Cobb salad. It is based on the original Cobb salad recipe from the original Brown Derby over in Hollywood. Um, definitely something I recommend. And this is one of my favorite restaurants. Um, definitely my favorite restaurant in this park. And one of my favorites in Disney World, I'd say. One that I always used to come to before I lived here. So I think the strategy I actually want to do is the far right row and go all the way down. But I am doing a couple oh, that's on a diagonal where uh, that will hopefully trip her up on some time. Uh, meaning go ride Fry's favorite ride. Fry Bucket made this board. Go ride Fry's favorite ride, which is uh, Alien Twilling Saucer. She has to go ride that ride to maybe block me or, or trip her up by doing a, a, that Halloween 
uh, square. I feel like I'll lead her down the garden path a little bit. So this is Disney Photo Pass, Tinseltown Photos. Basically inside, that's where you can uh, get your photos, your Photo Pass photos if you missed any or you wanna, uh, or you wanna purchase Photo Pass. This is your one-stop shop for all things Photo Pass. But inside is where you can actually find Snow White signature as well as signatures of other famous uh, voiceover artists, famous actors, actresses. They've got uh, some of the characters of Winnie the Pooh, the voice, the voice of Winnie the Pooh, uh, signed autographs in there. And if you're a, a musical theater nerd like I am, uh, they've got uh, signatures of Broadway posters from the Broadway cast. So that's pretty cool as well. But inside, that's where you can find so Snow White signature and we can cross that one off the board for me. Hopping into the shops here because one of the tasks is to find a souvenir for Fry in three different lands. So I'm gonna pick out something Pandora in this land. There is a shop where you can find Pandora jewelry, lots of Disney charms, and exclusive, some beautiful stuff, as well as some really fun fandom stuff. And I just need to find something for my girl Fry. Oh, the Fantastic ones are good. Mm. Some Cinderella, Tinkerbell, Frozen, Ariel. Aha, here's what I'm going with. This Beauty and the Beast. Uh, charm, the bell and beast charm on the right is what my souvenir for Fry is for Sunset Boulevard, which is the land we're in right now. So that will be my first of those souvenirs and hopefully I remember to keep doing that. Okay, uh, uh, headed down Sunset Boulevard to grab some other squares. All right, another easy uh, square I can I can get that I know because I love 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 OG MGM Studios. But where Star Wars Launch Bay once was was the animation building, and that is where uh, literally they actually made movies, uh, animated movies, uh, 2D movies, not the um, not the CGI movies you see today like Frozen things like that, computer generated movies. This was definitely old school animation, uh, you can actually see animators uh, actually at work making some of these, uh, making some of these movies, as well as you can take a tour. Uh, there was even, same situation, there were meet and greets. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, there was even a moment with like Mushu, where Mushu would come out of like, it was like a whole show that happened where uh, they were teaching how to draw certain characters, a lot of fun. But the square says to say a movie that was completely made here in the animation building, or formerly the animation building, and Mulan. Mulan uh, was made completely here at formerly MGM Studios. I am passing Beauty and the Beast live on stage, which is a spot where I can do a square and I probably will momentarily, but I'm trying to head back here towards Hollywood Tower up here because Sage just got show a Snow White signature. Since that middle square is a free space, it can count for either of us. And that means he technically has three in a row and only needs two more. Luckily, um, I can't remember where Snow White's signature is, but I don't think it's close to here. So we should be able to show where it's permanently Halloween. Well, before he gets down here and block him. The Hollywood Tower of Terror is a really fun, spooky drop attraction based on the Twilight Zone. It is very cool. You end up sort of dropping in an elevator. Very thrilling, very scary, um, but definitely a favorite of mine. And this ride is also chock full of hidden details. Even if you don't want to ride it, I do recommend going through the queue and chicken exiting to see all the hidden details in the pre-show. Or you can come pop into Tower Hotel Gifts and the exit area for the ride to see some hidden details, including Halloween extravaganza elegant costumery available. Is that because it's Halloween all the time here? It sure is because the fatal incidents of the Hollywood Tower Hotel when the elevator dropped all those years ago did happen on Halloween night, the night of their Halloween extravaganza. And the hotel has kind of been stuck in time uh, at Halloween since. This is also the home of Hollywood Studios secret restaurant, The Sunset Room. This is not a real restaurant, but it is a restaurant nonetheless. As you can see, the menu is left over from Halloween with a bunch of really interesting things on here like grilled bluefish or Belgian endive on dive. I don't know how to say that. Deviled quail on toast. Um, that is the sunset room. It's one of my favorite hidden details. I love that the whole menu is still posted on the wall, but it's, you know, closed and locked because some stuff happened at this hotel. I don't know. Something like that. Uh, maybe we'll be open someday.
It worked. It worked. Okay. She blocked me and did the Halloween square. Which means she thinks I'm going for that one. Now, I know for a fact she does not know the Rick Blaine address, which means that has to be the last one I do. I have to make my way to Galaxy's Edge to pick out my favorite droid. Then I can make my way back to Echo Lake where I believe Rick Blaine, uh, you can find Rick Blaine's address. All right, I have got to figure out what is Rick Blaine's address um, because Sage is going for that down row and I know that where he is, he is probably closer to pointing out your favorite droid and why. So I'm gonna check. I don't remember who Rick Blaine is, but I do know where I can find some addresses. So I'm gonna go see if I can't find Rick Blaine's address to block him. If that's even where he's going at this point. I am just kind of playing defense right now and trying to block Sage, which might not be a great move for me, but you know, I, I can't let him get five in a row. So I'm just, I gotta block him when I see him going for it. Here's what I'm thinking for addresses is I think maybe we can find something in Walt Disney Presents. It's possible that the address is something to do with Baseline Tap House. Uh, that lounge it used to be Rider Stop and now it's a really amazing beer spot that we love. But it's also got uh, a theme of like a print shop kind of situation. And both prints and writing, you know, I could see them having some kind of address hidden detail. Um, I also might swing this way. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm gonna swing through here first. Okay, there are two ways into Galaxy's Edge. I believe this way is the quickest, especially to uh, from where we were and to where we want to go, which is the Droid Depot. The Droid Depot is at the back of Galaxy's Edge. This is obviously Fry's favorite ride. Alien swirling saucers, we don't have time for you. 30 minute wait, sorry. I don't have time for you for a 30 minute wait even when I'm not doing a competition. Sorry, Fry. We have made it to Galaxy's Edge. Stormtroopers are over there, we gotta be careful of that. But this is the Droid Depot. This is where you can build your own droids. But you see that orange droid right there? Uh, I always thought, that's an R5 unit. I always thought Sammy from the Galaxy Star Cruiser it would that, that would be this that would be the droid that he would have kind of a messed up oh look it's, there it is kind of like a, a junky messed up one it doesn't quite work but he just means well <laughs> that's which is kind of sammy's mo too so hey buddy my favorite droid or sammy's favorite droid my, my favorite droid uh sammy's character i played galactic star because you guys should know this by now all right one more square hopefully she doesn't pick up the rick blaine square Confirmed he got droid. I've got to find this address. Okay, I'm singing kind of a long route because I know there's a lot of hidden details along Echo Lake on the doors and such. And I'm gonna pick something out for a fry for a souvenir while I'm in here. Hmm. Ah, my girl loves Minnie Mouse. I could see her with this bag any day of the week. That's my second fry souvenir here on Hollywood Boulevard. The first land when you enter Hollywood Studios. Okay around the corner. So some of my favorite hidden details in Hollywood Studios are actually on the doors and signage around Echo Lake and in the windows. Um, there's Holly Vermont Realty, office space for rent. My favorite ones are up here. No addresses there. Cosmetic dentistry and a directory, Glamour Salon. See how we pull on Ruth Canal and Les Payne. That's one of my favorite details, those dentist names. But no addresses, no addresses in the windows here. I see books. Gonna continue on to check the Muppet Courtyard maybe. Just kind of checking these crates. I don't see any addresses here. Nope. Ooh. Oh no. I love that about Galaxy's Edge. They always have some, some sort of uh, walk around live entertainment because live entertainment is important it always makes the parks or the lands feel more alive when they have 
those kinds of moments. It makes it feel lived in, which is really what kind of Star Wars is, right? It's, it's these junky spaces that feel real, like they can really be in a galaxy far, far away. All right, red plane, I'm coming for you. All right, moving on. Uh, while I'm in Echo Lake, I can pick out my third fry souvenir, hope for some addresses, maybe go grab some other stuff. I'm really at a loss on the, the Rick Blaine address. Where to find that? Who is Rick Blaine? I hope I'm not getting shouted at in the comments. And I don't know what to do now. I should have found my hand twin and done the hands ones. Oh no. Should I go back? Uh, I'm gonna go back. Tell you what, moving a little slower right now. We have one, at the time of filming, allergies have been kicking lately. And two, past two days uh, were crazy. We just filmed um, Emma and I having our perfect day at Magic Kingdom without using Genie Plus, which was stressful, but we actually ended up having a fantastic day. And then yesterday, we just filmed uh, the A to Z challenge at Epcot. And now, <clears throat> and we were only there for, let me say, uh, five, six hours. But over the course of five, six hours, we got almost like 17 plus thousand steps. Just just like me by myself. That one was definitely a wild challenge. And uh, I don't know if that'll be up on the channel now or soon, but look for that. The place to be when looking for a hand twin is going to be the Chinese theater. This is kind of the centerpiece of Hollywood Studios. It is home to the Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway attraction. And has the amazing detail of having Hollywood style handprints in the pavers in front of it. And I actually know my hand twin. It is so busy. I think I can still get to him. My hand twin is right here. It's Ray Liotta. Actually, we have the same hands. So it is so busy over here, but I got him. That's my hand twin. Now I'm getting out of everybody's way. Quincy and I were having a whole conversation before about this. And I, honest, I honestly had literally had no idea where it was. And then I remembered these crates. And that's the interesting thing about Hollywood Studios. You can often find Easter eggs almost anywhere you look just because uh, it was formerly MGM Studios and it was all about uh, the behind the scenes uh, and how you make movies. So hidden within Hollywood Studios are basically homages to different movies, to different people who made movies. Now I do know Rick Blaine was in Casablanca, but I, how would we know his address? And I feel like it's on a crate somewhere, because that's what I remember seeing one time. Rick Blaine. Mm -hmm. I swear it's on a crate somewhere. Hey, we just had to call pause because Sage did find Rick Blaine's address or was close to it, but a cast member like said that they painted over it, but he didn't know where it was yet. So our producer decided to call the square null and void for now. They might replace it later if it becomes more relevant. But for now, the game plays with that square out of play. And I'm looking for very specific handprints. Here, I found them. This is Audrey Hepburn's handprints, and Audrey Hepburn's handprints are not in Hollywood, they're only here, which is super interesting because Audrey Hepburn is like a movie star, movie star, but that is definitely another square. I think while I'm here, I'm gonna pop down Hollywood Boulevard and see how much gas is today, because I've got this column on the left that I can go for. I'm no longer stressed about the address thing since the square's null and void, so. I am headed that way to gas. Here at PB's Polar Pipeline, all the way in the back, there's some uh, props from the Rocketeer. It's a movie prop from Rocketeer, a movie back in the day. Uh, I have literally never seen the Rocketeer. Don't know why. It just never been my my calling. But got some movie props. So find a real movie prop. That's that one's mine. Sorry, Rick Blaine. Here's a Rocketeer prop. Okay, Sage got movie prop, which blocks one of my column options. So, I guess he's reorienting to a numbers game then? Well, he has to. 
because I've blocked him everywhere else except the Rick Blaine side. Okay, numbers game it is. Honestly, right now, I just, I just have to block Quincy because of my strategy that I thought was gonna work. She's the only one that has the potential to get five in a row right now. So I'm on my way to Beauty and the Beast because I need to uh, stand outside Beauty and the Beast and recreate your favorite scene for one minute. Okay, here goes nothing. Okay, I'm coming up to Oscar's Super Service gas station. This is where you can actually rent strollers and wheelchairs. In this park, it's also right near a locker rental. And the theming is that it is a little gas station. And gas is $1.99 per gallon. Man, I wish that is how much gas was. All right, we're here at Theater of the Stars where they're doing Beauty and the Beast live on stage. Uh, Make sure to check the show times because the show times do tend to change. Uh, but, oh, it sounds like there's a show happening right now. It is a short 25 minute retelling of Beauty and the Beast, uh, the classic movie. Here we go. All right, all right my, favorite, my favorite scene is mob scene. So, um, the beast will make off with the children, but come after them in the night. We're not safe until his head is mounted on my wall. I say we kill the beast. We're not safe until he's dead. He'll come stalking us at night. Send a sad pause our children with his monstrous appetite. He'll wreak havoc on our village, and I want to free. So it's time to take some action, boys. It's time to follow me. I've got this column, I've got three out of five in the column on the left. Um, the left things I have are dancing and wedding for two minutes, and what did Annie's mom write him? I know where to find both of those answers, but I don't know that I can get to both before Sage can log me with one of them. And I don't know, I have no clue where he is. It's a beast, he's got fangs, razor sharp ones. That's the pause, killer claws for the feast. Hear him roar, see him fall, but we're not coming home till he's dead. Good and dead. Kill the beast. One minute, done. So I'm just gonna go to the one that I think is a little physically close to me right now, which is Toy Story Land. Um, I can finish the fry souvenir clue and then hopefully get a uh, Get over there. I mean, he's gonna block me. Maybe he's not paying attention. That's our hope. Everyone cross your fingers that the city is not paying attention. Oh, okay. This is literally, this is it. This is gonna be the thing that makes or breaks it. I have to make it to Muppet Courtyard before she does. She just got gas. And the last one on that row that, that I actually know what it is, is dance at a wedding for two minutes. I, I, I think she knows that I don't know what did Andy's mom write to him because, because I just I just don't know what it is. Making my way to the wedding. I need to do a wedding. I need to dance at a wedding. Now this does not mean the game is over if I get dance at a wedding. If I get dance at a wedding, I just block Quincy, which means she definitely cannot get that five in a row. But if I block Quincy, then the game of numbers continues, and I still got a shot of this. I'm almost at Toy Story Land, but I like being in this area because one of the squares is made a character wearing blue, and Frozone and Sully meet over there, and Ariel from the live action Little Mermaid meets uh, right here in Walt Disney Presents. She typically has a short line, she's wearing a blue dress. So that could be a great option. She's also in the AC, which could elongate our stamina. Now this one's a fun easter egg that Fry has literally shown me I believe over here. It's this table right here. I can't see exactly what it says but I can see that it says love mom and I don't want to disturb the people there. Also the cast members currently have Woody's lunchbox locked down so producer said it's okay to count just the love mom part and uh, hopefully we have a picture of the full note. But Woody's lunchbox is a lunchbox themed restaurant. It's supposed to be Andy's lunchbox. Uh, where you can get some Toy Story treats. Growing up grilled cheese is very good. Um, so the lunchbox starts. But uh, since it's a lunchbox, a note has fallen out and is being used as a table by the toys, that's us, uh, from Andy's mom. Fast walking. I wore shorts today too for this. Now there were others I could get in Toy Story Land. We had Ride Fry's favorite ride, which is Aliens Filling Saucers. How many Christmas lights are in Andy's backyard? I could have gotten both of those, but I am rushing over to dance for two minutes at a wedding with the hopes so Sage is not currently dancing for two minutes at a wedding. But I'll tell you one thing, that man loves to dance and that man loves a wedding. So, you know, I'm hoping. We've made it to Muppet Courtyard. 
and we are actually headed to Pizza Rizzo. Pizza Rizzo is the pizza joint here in Disney World. Uh, but we always say that pizza's not the best here at Pizza Rizzo. It's that puff pastry pizza. Uh, definitely just better things you can have at Disney World. It's, it's not the worst pizza you've ever had, but if you're, if you're coming to Disney World, you might as well, you know, treat yourself. Get something, get something worth that money. But inside, on the second floor, there is like a, a, a fake little event space where you can still eat your pizza, but it's a fake event space where they actually, uh, it's basically a wedding room. And they're actually, uh, they're, they are having a wedding. Rizzo's Deluxe Supreme Banquet Hall. Somebody got married. It's a wedding reception of Gil and Lil, daughter of Will and Jill and son of Phil and Bill. Let's go. It's always weird dancing in here by myself because I'm the only one on the dance floor. <laughs> and there are families eating around me. Blocked me with the wedding. I knew it was gonna happen. Ugh. Smart still. Okay, I'm in Joy Depot to pick out a souvenir for Fry. Uh, this is where you can build your own droid. Fry was part of the opening team for Galaxy's Edge, so I think that maybe a little BB unit like this might be a good third souvenir for her. I am gonna head to Pixar Place, which is unfortunately at the other side of the park, because I think we need to meet a character in blue. And also find A113, and both of those things you can do at Pixar Place. I'm hoping Frozen is out, because uh, that would be the, that'd be the way to go. I think we are both saving Fry's favorite ride for last, because it's a 30 minute wait. But for now, let's head over to Pixar Place. I know that there's an A113 reference in blocks over here. Uh, what else? How many Christmas lights are in Andy's backyard? I'm gonna have to count that. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, we made it to Pixar Place. Uh, I don't see Frozone out. You don't uh, Sully out? I don't see Sully out either. Mr. and Mrs. Incredible are out, that's good. But... There's an A and a three. Is this it? A one, one, three. I mean, this could be it. Ooh. I don't know though. That is A113 so over, uh, over by the Incredibles. Right now it's where the uh, Incredibles are meeting. It's, it's kind of a line. I don't want to get in the way, but the, uh, the movie poster over there, Dementia 113, you see A13. Oh yeah, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61. 62. A113 is actually the classroom uh, that a bunch of uh, alumni graduated from uh, uh, at, at California Institute of the Arts. Yes, that, 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 that's right. And uh, so they all became Disney animators and now they include A113 in a lot of their uh, movies, uh, shorts, uh, even you'll see it all over Disney parks. It's just a fun homage to be like, hey, remember where we came from? Uh, but it's, it's a really cool. Uh, Easter egg, and so if you see A113, know that it's in Disney Animator being like, what's up? 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77. Interesting. I have not heard from Quincy in a while, and I don't know why. 200, 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. She's counting Christmas lights. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. 249, 250, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. I'm not counting out ones. 59, 60, 61. 
261. Ice Cold Hydraulics is the newest uh, addition to Grand Central Avenue. Looks like you can grab pretty much anything here. <laughs> this is kind of a larger menu than I anticipated, but uh, anything from uh, mini churros, Mickey shaped pretzels, popcorn, candy paint and cinnamon rolls, as well as I think their big claim to fame here is frozen slushies with alcohol. 73, 74, 75, 76. 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82. Is that it? Are there any more? Please say that's it. So these are the Bouncing Mini Churros, which are savory churros topped with Coca-Cola and bourbon candied bacon, sriracha aioli, and scallions, uh, around $8.99. All right, let's get it. So there were definitely some competing flavors there. It was uh, it was a normal mini churro, like the, the cinnamon sugar, this churro that you would normally get anywhere. But it was topped with this Coke and bourbon candy bacon, which added an interesting uh, kind of sticky sweetness to it. But the thing that was, and I, and I actually didn't mind that, but the thing that was the most interesting was the sriracha aioli. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm probably gonna go ha have to go back there to try it again when I'm not in such a rush with the scavenger hunt. My first takeaway is, uh, that's kind of weird because at first glance I was like, that's gonna be awesome. But it, it was, I was a little let down by it. I wanted, I wanted to like it. I'm gonna go have to back, I'm, I'm gonna have to go back and try that. If you've tried that already, let me know. Thoughts about that. I'm having a, I'm having a crisis over these. Man, counting the Christmas lights got to me, but it's 282, final answer. Hopefully for the square. <laughs> Aliens Rolling Saucers is now saying 40 minutes. So I'm gonna say that's a no for me, dog. And go, go to space, I guess. All right, I made it to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. You might think, oh, we got to go to Space Square, but no, because being on the planet of Batu is just like being on the planet of Earth. You're not in space. Because Quincy is doing space, I think I'm gonna make my, my way back to Pixar Place. I believe Sully starts meeting again at two o'clock, which is five minutes from now. So headed back to Pixar Place. 58 looks like there is no line for Sully, but photo pass is there. Character attendants are there, they're waiting. So I'm gonna get in line. Oh, okay, good to know. Uh, my Disney experience app was wrong, so make sure to check with your, your uh, character attendants that are nearby. Sully's not back until 2.30, even though the app says two, but I guess Frozen will be out momentarily. Two o'clock, Frozen. Where are you, man? Where's my super suit? What's going on, Frozen? Good to see you, man. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm playing a game with some friends and a uh, scavenger hunt around, uh, around uh, Park today. They said, yeah, I gotta meet somebody blue. I said, the only person I wanna meet in blue is Frozone. Hey, look at it, look at it, look at that spin. Okay, went to space, stage just that Frozone. We are tied 11 and 11, and we are both so close to Alien Smelling Saucers. This is truly a race to see who can get there first, so we'll see who makes it. No, 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 what is the, listen, I love live entertainment. And the, and the Green Army Man, the drum corps, you guys are awesome. There's a huge crowd blocking my way. All right, drummers are drumming. Alien Thrilling Saucers is a fun kind of spinny ride where you ride in a little green alien. Uh, we're having a 40 minute wait to hopefully wrap up this scavenger hunt. I don't see Sage. I don't see, I see Sage. Yes, but the first square is Ride Summit Plummet. Why do you always want to go to Blizzard Beach? If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go watch us play a crazy Game Master in Blizzard Beach. I'll see you there. Brutal edition.